Hello all, Alison here and welcome back to A Few Minutes of Fun. Today I'm having a few minutes of fun doing some simple collaging. I've got a background that we made a few weeks back in uh, the flipping stencils episode. I've grabbed one of my Paper Artsy stamp sets because I kind of feel like playing with that. I've got a couple of Tim Holtz photo figures. So there's one of the paper dolls and uh, a photomatic snapshot that's the slightly larger version of the photo booth uh, packets of tim holtz ephemera which are always fun to play with and yeah strips and bits of painted paper and leftover tissue paper that have been hanging around for a while and and you know i may have to run away and grab other things as well this background was created with the nordic stencil and you can go back and have a look at that stencil flipping video if you'd like to see what we did there so i'm just going to spend a few minutes building this page I may or may not get to an end um, but we'll see what happens I've got other things on standby or I might run away and pick some other things but I think I'm going to start by adding some extra stamping in the background here um, rustling of packets so these are just some umbelitha flowers I'm going to pick a sort of coordinating colour to stamp them in I think I'm going to go with Oh, something like maybe, hmm, should have decided this before I started, shouldn't I, really? How about crash bang wallop go the oxide pads? But let's start with something nice and gentle in the background. I'm feeling, feeling in need of something gentle. So I think maybe a couple of stems of this. Oh yes, look, you see, it looks as if it's growing out of the background lucky lucky shot i can't even remember what i mean stormy sky was definitely one of the ink sprays i had around on that day oh see i'm enjoying that quite a lot and what you also get in this stamp set uh, is sort of the same plant but a, almost a, a view from above if you like so there's a little stamp in there that i might grab and do a similar thing, but this time slightly different colour. I might take a scorched timber, which is this glorious final addition to the Distress range. Just a beautiful, cool, dark, intense brown. And I'm not, I'm not much of a one for using black. Black and white photos is is one of the only times black really comes into play on my work so having a super intense dark that is not black and has this lovely cool tone because I, I do like to work at the cooler end of colour ranges um, has been a really gorgeous addition I need that nearer the edge of the stamp plate there because otherwise I'm going to bump into my hinges and you can see I'm I'm not really planning ahead I know that I want to keep some white space going up in this direction that was sort of the plan already when I did this stencil flip background um I I just thinking about the collaging kind of moving in that direction so at the moment I'm just putting some stamping down that I think will support that directionality that kind of way of playing do I want a little bit of yeah maybe maybe a very subtle this is this is the lovely label here paper artsy are now based in france so a little bit of a little bit of frenchification uh, is always a nice thing in a stamp set so sorry i'm doing that off camera just inking that up with that one's pebble beach that's a very subtle archival ink and I, well, I don't know that I want the whole thing. So rather than stamping the whole of that label, I might just give it a kind of partial stamping. So it's just sort of hovering in view. And repeat stamping without inking it up again means it's getting paler and paler. So it's a subtler and subtler little element. It, it may or may not still be visible once I've, <laughs> once I've started collaging. So I think that's, that's kind of making me quite happy as a background already. Little flowers emerging out of that stencil background. Tags flying out of the back of the journal. Let's move him out of the way. Yeah, it just hasn't been stuck down yet. So 
In fact, maybe it's easier to work like that. There we go. Yeah, I think she I think it's I think she's the one calling to me with the flowers and all. Um, but I have also got these these painty panels hanging around. They were from a previous project. Um, and I think I think they'll make quite a nice sort of m mosaic. This is this is sort of the thing I use them for. I use them to try out a, a mosaic tile pattern on the cover of a book. Oh look, that bit's got some hanging off. I think I think we might just neaten that up. Hanging off, gone. Maybe you. Oh yes, there we go. Something like that. Something like that and you can see the flowers are starting to vanish be behind this but but that's that's fine by me i might drop them down a little bit and now the stenciling is starting to vanish rather than the flowers so that's that's an option i could trim these a little smaller so that we've got slightly smaller panels then they'll cover up less that's that's always an option uh um, and I'm not, I, I really, I'm not going to bother about straight lines. I want, I want a bit of randomness in this. I don't want perfect tiling just as well, because I'm not getting it. Let's keep that a vertical one. Let's keep that a horizontal one. I rather like the sort of Monet-esque look of some of these. They were, they were just very simply painted panels. Um, there we go. Yeah. See, that looks pretty good to me as a sort of starting point. So I think I'm just going to glue them down before I can change my mind. Um, and you can see it's it's gentle spring colours. I haven't haven't moved into summer mode yet with <laughs> lots of colour. Um, I'm going to glue these down without very much thought. I'm just going to get them on there because really, you know, it's it's paper and paint and a bit of ink what what does it matter it's not life or death it's not brain surgery it's something that gives us pleasure moments of being in creative flow moments of letting things emerge in terms of color and shape and story i think i think that's one of one of the reasons i really enjoy working with the paper dolls and the photo booth snapshots is i find that they start to tell me what to do and they and they start to tell me stories as we yes you see look and she's just sitting in her little mosaic i've got some strips of tissue paper here that got torn off after other projects and I'm thinking I might thinking I might use those as additional structure additional detailing yeah I think so uh, these I'm going to do with a more fluid matte medium because what's nice with the tissue paper is if you can get it to sort of vanish so I'm going to use um, a fluid matte medium on those so that it's it's really wetting the paper as I put it on which means that as I apply the paper to the page, <laughs> if I don't get it all caught up, first of all, anybody done any wallpapering? That's going to mean that as I place it down, I get a really translucent effect and I can still see my painty panels behind it. I can still even see the stenciling behind it. A little bit fell off, don't really mind. I could add it at this end. Doesn't really need it, but you know, it's another little bit of detail. So again, this, um, this happens to be golden fluid matte medium, um, but you can, it, kind of anything will do. Or if you've got just an acrylic glue, add, add a little bit of water to it, mix it up in a little separate dish, add a little bit of water and you can get a nice fluid glue for sticking down your tissue paper. Anybody who's done any, um, serviette and technique i know it has um with paper napkins or any decoupage you'll know 
what I'm talking about here in terms of allowing your paper to be nice and wet. And then also bearing in mind that your paper is quite fragile. So as you're pressing it down, just, just, just be a little gentle with it. Um, so that it doesn't get ripped to shreds. Although if it gets ripped to shreds, that's more texture. So why not? Um, yeah, I like how that's giving us a little bit of structure. Have I got another little bit lying around? I might pop another little bit just, just going across here, maybe. It's going to peek out from behind her. Yeah, sold. <laughs> um, I've got enough left on the mat here, I think, to do it. Don't need to open the paint pot again. Glue pot, medium pot. There we are. Just giving us another little bit of detail, another little bit of what, what I think of as the architecture of of a collage the structure that kind of allows things to sit and rest and yeah be supported i like that i've got some other little bits of ephemera labels hanging around that i might have a little play with and just see if i want to say so i pulled that one out because it matched the painty panels but i i think it's going to be too much so with collaging, I think it's it's nice to spend some time playing with little elements. Does that does that take away the flowers too much? I think it might. I think I might just prefer us with the white space. It's got more light, more airiness going on. Um, but I I do like that one. And these tiny labels of Tim Holtz's very often come out to play when I'm collaging because I love that they can add just a little accent of something um, in various ways. Just a little sort of shaped label in there. Maybe another one heading down here. I'm, I'm pulling them out fairly much at random, but I'm keeping an eye out for neutrals. Ooh, maybe that's a nicer... Well, I like the warmth of that one. There's one that sort of tones in with those little labels, so that might be quite nice to have around. Um, I tend to work in harmonious colour zones as opposed to deeply contrasting colour zones. Autumn, autumn is when you might see me starting to get out the, <laughs> the bold colours. But for the most part, I, I like to work sort of round the matching ends of the colour wheel. Colours that are quite close to one another, colours that speak to one another gently. I think, I think that might be enough labels. It's very rare for me to decide so early that that's enough labels. Um, but I quite like, quite like the simplicity of what's going on here. Don't want to lose that little extra bit I put there. So just the positioning of that's going to be interesting. And maybe it's a little label somewhere here. Just so that I'm balancing those two warmer browns. And I do, I do want another one. <laughs> I want another one in there that's going to complement what's already going on. There it is. It's just luck, really, fishing them out. Yeah. Yes, okay, that's starting to work for me now. And might be a question of tucking another little one behind here. Yes, and of course, being me, it, it won't be finished until I've added some words. And more than likely, they're going to come from this small talk sticker uh, set. They quite often throw up the thing you need. And this is, this is again, one of the places where occasionally I do find myself heading for the black quote because it just gives me that little moment of contrast. Now, so I'm going to sit with that for a little while, have a look at it, uh, and if I'm content then I shall be gluing it all down. But I think I've kept you 
at least a few minutes already. So I'm going to do that in my own time and uh, hopefully pop a little montage onto the end of this showing you the finished page. Thanks so much for dropping in. If you've enjoyed yourself, it would be great if you wanted to do subscribe to the channel or and or hit the thumbs up button uh, and leave a comment if you'd like to. It all helps me grow the channel and invite more people along for a few minutes of fun. Thanks so much for stopping by and happy crafting all. So here she is, all stuck down. Uh, I added a little bit of this mummy cloth, it's cheesecloth we used to know it in the UK, uh, behind her, because I do love a bit of texture and a bit of movement. And I added in a bit of extra uh, umbrella for stamping around those edges. And yeah, I, I think for now, I'm calling that done. My final stage, as always, just a little bit of white splatter again for energy and movement. So there she is, uh, finished off.